And good morning again, everyone. Richard Copperthwaite for Northwest Access TV. It's a live show, at least if you're watching us live, and we'll even take some phone calls if you feel so inclined. 528-5315, and very happy to have Carolyn Brannigan, the Republican candidate for state treasurer, former longtime legislator from Georgia, guesting with us this morning. Good to see you, Carolyn. Thanks, Richard. It's very good to be here. Thank right, you for inviting me. We appreciate your, your time. Uh, again, I've got the uh, Republican... I've got the uh, primary ballot in front of me, and uh, I guess you're not sweating the primary too much, which, of course, is coming up next week, uh, Tuesday, August 11th. Yes, that's right. It's August 11th, uh, and I don't have a contest uh, for the Republican nomination. Yeah. The primary ballot, of course, as I'm sure your listeners know, uh, sets up the, the ballot for the general election. It's yeah. a... It's a, a contest among the, uh, the parties themselves, Republicans right. against Republicans, Democrats right. against Democrats. The real contest starts after sure. the primary yeah. uh, as we edge toward the general election. And I don't have a, uh, a contest for the primary, so yes, you're correct. I, I'm, I'm, long, as long as I get enough votes to get on the ballot, that's 1,500. I'm pretty sure I'll get that statewide. I would, I would, I would expect so. And for the record, uh, I guess the Progressive Party in Vermont is also a, an official party. So folks in voting mm -hmm. in the primary, if they're so inclined, can also pick up a Progressive Party ballot. Right. But uh, boy, it, and it sounds like um, it sounds like the turnout. I mean, you think of primary. Of course, I'm I'm concerned. I think it, it would make more sense to me to have the primary after Labor Day, as New Hampshire does. Um, but again, other folks say, I oh, know it should be a much earlier. Are you happy with the timing of a, just a, a, a kind of a mid-August primary, or is there no great timing for a primary? Uh, you know, I, I wish that we did not have a primary. I right? think these candidates should be chosen by the party. Hmm. Keep, keep the state out of it. Keep big, big money out of it. Hmm. Uh, and, and just have the, have the parties choose their own candidate. Interesting. Um, but anyway, as far as your question was about getting it, getting timing for the primary, yeah. there is no good time. Yeah. When you're ready, you're ready. Because yeah. I, I think I've even asked Secretary of State Jim Condos about this. Why not wait till Labor Day? And, and the response I get from him and other folks, we have, you know, folks abroad, uh, soldiers abroad and stuff. We have to get the ballots out. And again, New Hampshire's primary is after Labor Day. I'm saying it's New Hampshire. What's different? New Hampshire's twice as big as Vermont. <laughs> anyway, but that's uh, not, not much of an issue. Yeah. So again, a former longtime legislator here, seven terms in the House, Carolyn, I believe. Uh, yeah, I think One that's right. One term in the Senate. I checked that yeah. in an old legislative handbook. Yeah. And, uh, and again, now running for state treasurer. And so, in fact, I think I can recall a conversation with you years ago, I think when you were even giving some thought about running for secretary of state. Uh -huh. Did I dream that, or was that even no. something you had thought about? Uh, yeah, that was right. That, that huh. But now, <laughs> I, again, I official candidate for state treasurer. So where did yeah. this candidacy come from? Well, uh, I, I was first elected to the House in 2002, yeah. and then I served in the House until 16, 2016, yeah. ran, uh, ran for the Senate. I served one term in the Senate, yeah. and um, during all that time, um, I, 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 I found that money was my favorite topic and where I was focused as far as my committee assignments. In the House, uh, I was assigned to the Ways and Means Committee and eventually became vice chair, vice chair. Yeah. which is as high as you can go when the Democrats are in control yeah. for a Republican. Yeah. Um, and I, I learned a lot about our state um, revenues coming in and uh, tax balance, uh, how uh, Vermonters um, uh, have to pay their taxes and what they're able to pay. Um, and so that's what uh, often caused me to focus on the revenues that we already had and how we were best using them, how we were uh, making sure that the, the uh, dis distribution of tax liability was equitable and, and fair. So um, l thinking more and more about the treasurer's office, it just seems um, uh, a natural fit for me. And in examining what went on in that office, what continues to go on there, I became um, increasingly concerned over what's happening with the retirement fund. The retirement fund is that pool of money that we use to pay the retirement benefits and health care benefits in retirement for our Vermont state employees and our public school teachers. Mm -hmm. 
and we're in trouble. There's only about half as much money in that fund as what we're going to need. No. Um, for <clears throat> nearly 25 years, the deposits made in that fund on behalf of the state, so the employees and the state share responsibility for that fund, the state only uh, put in less than 60%. Oh. And so we are, we are in big trouble. It is a tsunami waiting to hit us. And this um, goes back here. I mean, this has been underfunded for I mean for forever for just many years. To me, when I look at the books, it yeah. it looks like it started in uh, 1979. Really. And then for from then on for approximately 25 years, yeah. the fund was uh, was underfunded by the state contribution. Huh. Um, nearly every year, some years they were. Uh, they were not, but for 25 years it was underfunded, right. and uh, so we're just jumping right into the so heavy this duty kind of like stuff a social here. Social Security situation. I'm hearing that Social Security we're in good shape for another 15 years, and or so, and unless changes are made, then benefits will have to be reduced. I'd like to think folks will do what they have to do, but is this? I mean, there's enough money right now. I mean, uh, the retired state employees and teachers are getting the money they. They should be getting now, but but if you look down the road enough, at, at some point they wouldn't be able to get all they should get. So no. kind of like Social Security or not nothing so, like uh, that. Keep it, I want your your listeners to keep in yeah. mind that Social Security is a federal program. Oh, sure. right. The the um, the trust fund that takes care of our state employees right. is entirely run by the state of right. Vermont. I just mean and I just mean down the road. Is it a case it'll just run out of money at yes. some point unless it's funded better? Yes, or? that's right. Okay. But what's happening now is that there, there isn't even enough money in in the pay-as-you-go system that we yeah. have yeah. to pay the current um, liabilities. Yeah, really. So what happens is we yeah. take it out of the general fund. So, th so that means our safety net for okay. social issues is getting smaller and smaller because we have to pay it out of the general fund. Yeah. Uh, so there's, there's always some percentage, uh, you know, 25 or 30 million each year in recent years that we've had to scoop right out of the general fund. Yeah. So we don't get to pay for the things that we need, yeah. improvements in our um, prison system, our yeah. state police, our... Uh, you know everything that yeah. we pay for in the general fund, Medicaid, uh, that that is that is all um, being harmed by yeah. uh, by by the the lack of prudence in investments yeah. in this retirement fund. So I I see that uh, I understand that I think that most Vermonters do not know this, but it is it is a tsunami, a tidal wave yeah. of debt that is going to crash into us and and sap up all of our resources. Wow. We have to fix this. It can't wait. I don't, I don't mean to sound like I'm in a panic, but yeah. it is very, very serious. Uh, I think that most legislators don't understand this. Yeah. I only understand it because I spent 12 years in the Ways and Means right. Committee. And each year, more than once, we'd hear from the state treasurer. Yeah. Um, those those people are, you know, I mean, Jeb Spaulding, I, I think of, le you know, level-headed, calm, not apt to stir people up, right. but I always got stirred up when he came in and, and yeah, talked I about note this. For the record, you'll be running in November against the incumbent Democrat Beth Pierce. Correct. Who I haven't met, and Beth has no, she has no primary opposition either. That's right. And, That's right. And Jeb Spalding, who you mentioned, former state treasurer, of course, more recently former Vermont State College's chancellor, who made some news a couple months ago. Maybe we can <laughs> touch on that later. All but right. boy, I guess I guess what strikes me. Carolyn, with the pandemic, it just seems like, boy, if you're talking about a, a difficult time to address what you say is a, a hugely significant issue, I can't think of a, a tougher time to address it. Is that not, not the case? I mean, isn't this a, yeah. it just seems almost <laughs> yeah. unimaginable. Uh, un, how, how can you possibly deal with it? It just seems like you just need, the system just needs a ton more money when we're losing money by the day here. Yeah, well, I have some ideas. I don't think we can do it with taxes. Yeah. People in Vermont are taxed out, and yeah. they have been for a long time. I, yeah. I certainly know that from my work in yeah. Ways and Means, which, by the way, when I was in Ways and Means, I stopped a lot of tax from being signed into law yeah. and even working its way through the, the House. Um, I, I stopped a lot of that, and I also lowered and stopped a lot of fees 
hundreds of them. Mm. That never uh, got into the press, never um, uh, made news because they never made it out of committee. Those mm. were all committee decisions that I insisted on. So I know that Vermonters are taxed out. We cannot afford yeah. any more. But I have some ideas on how we might um, help this. and. Um, when I get into the position, I'll want to look further into each of these suggestions. But um, one thing I, I think we need is an annual stress test on that fund. This is a test that actuaries can draw up, and they often do on large funds that are, are um, uh, pointed at a particular need. They, they look at what the need is going to be down the road, and they come up with a test of means. It's a test of how, uh, how able the fund is going to be to pay for the needs as they exist off into the future. That's mm. a stress test. We need to start doing that annually. Mm. Um, and so that I, I want to I do that so we know exactly what the picture is. I know right now we are not in good shape because we're taking money out of the general fund. What should be our annual safety net money to cover the needs of state government and the people of Vermont. So we're, we're, we're scooping money out of there to pay for this retirement fund business. And so I know that right now we're not in good shape. I want to know if down the, down the road we're going to be in worse shape. I think we are, but we'll see. Um, improving the governance and transparency of that uh, group. Right now there's a uh, a, a committee of people who make the investments. Uh, we need to make sure that those um, committee don't have people on the committee don't have any personal uh, issues with the investments, and that everything is uh, ethical and liable. We, we're doing that now um, rigorously in the state house with our uh, people who are assigned to various committees. We need to make sure that happens with the, the people on the investment committee in the state, uh, as far as the. Um, the retirement fund goes. So it sounds um, like you're making, I can only assume, a, a, a lot of uh, noise about this when you're on Ways and Means. Yes. What you were saying was falling on deaf ears. Was nobody else or not enough people buying that there was an issue? Or what was the reaction People to this? don't understand. They don't yeah. understand yeah. Why, um, why we should be worried about this. Huh. Um, some do. I had a good talk about this with Randy Brock, and he's the one who gave me the term tsunami. It is right. a tsunami right. that people don't understand, and they, and even if they do understand it a little bit, uh, it, I mean, it's it's dry as yesterday's toast. It, it's so not a, a fun, exciting thing to read about, yeah. but it's something we have to face. We have to deal with this. We cannot let it go on. Right. Uh, I'm serious. This is a big, big deal, and we can't let it go. So but Again, and back to the timing of it, it just sounds like it couldn't be a worse time to deal with something. You say it has to be dealt with. It has to be dealt with. We have to um, uh, start uh, using that money uh, uh, wisely and f what, it was, what it was made for. Mm -hmm. Um, while, while I was in Ways and Means, a, um, this wasn't new tax money, so the, the bill went, the, the idea went through and got signed into law, but the, the idea was all the earnings would be divided in half. So what they did was, I, I don't approve of this, but that's what happened. They, um, they decided that all the investments would uh, you know, that would raise, say, X amount of money, half of X would go into the general fund, yeah. half of X would go into the, the uh, retirement fund. We shouldn't be doing that. We've got to put all the money intended for that fund, including what is raised uh, through the investments, back into the retirement fund. If we don't, yeah. see, that's what the actuarial design was mm -hmm. of the fund. We can't be fooling around with that. We've got to do as was directed in the in the write-up initially. If we don't, the fund won't turn out the way it's supposed to be in 2038, yeah. how, which how is many, the end. How many, for, how many uh, retired, whatever, former state employees and teachers are we talking about? Obviously, we're talking about thousands of people here. Yes, you know, there, are, there are about 35,000 people right wow. now who participate in wow. the fund. I think there are 19,000 state employees and 17,000 teachers. 
Well, a lot of people, as in retired, who are, who are getting some and pension, who, who are who are who are participating in the fund. Okay. So some of them are still out there working. Okay. But they're going to be drawing right. from that fund, so right. they're all invested in this fund. Right. Uh, about thirty-five thousand. What What about Governor Phil Scott, uh, who's pretty tied up these days with some other stuff? But is he? Are you impressed that he's on top of this, or is that an issue? You know, again, is an issue that's kind of lost in the shuffle at the moment anyway? Or how um, do you think, how, how has he dealt with this or not dealt with this? I like Phil Scott. I think he's doing a good job. Nobody's been better dealing with this pandemic. Yeah. He's great. Recently, he has started to talk about this, and I think he's become a yeah. believer. So um, I, I'm, I'm really glad. I can glad. only assume you've talked to him about this before. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so he, I've heard him say, I think there was a, a debate on VPR. Am I allowed to say that on sure, your show? Yeah, of course. <laughs> that, where he mentioned that one of the things he wanted to do is take care of the retirement fund. And to yeah. just take care of the retirement fund sounds like it's a quick fix. It's not. Yeah. This is going to take years. Like it. it took 30 years, more than that, to, yeah. to um, get into this predicament. It's going to take about 30 years to dig ourselves out. But we've got to start. Or, or, or we are not going to be able to afford it. I'm, I'm, I'm almost thinking of the Vermont State College's situation. It sounds like a, everybody says, hey, we know they've been underfunded, you know, haven't been getting the money they should be getting, just kicking the can down the road. It almost sounds like a, a somewhat similar situation in a way to that, that Vermont State College's, if they're going to survive, just somehow need a, a much bigger infusion of money. Yeah, that's correct. The colleges uh, have been in rough shape ever since I was elected uh, to the state house. I can't ever remember a time when people said, "Oh, hmm. the colleges are fine. We'll we'll use the money for something else." But um, slowly, that amount of money that we have um, put into uh, supporting the state colleges has decreased. Yeah. I think at one time uh, they were they were uh, supported by about half. By state money, and now down to like I hear 16, 17 percent or something. Yeah, very Lower, small. Maybe the lowest percentage in the country or something. Yeah, you know we have um, locally we have Lynn Dickinson who's on right. that board. You may right. want to get her in here. In fact, I interviewed Lynn a couple weeks ago. Oh, we good. We talked about that a little bit. Oh, good, terrific. With James Gregoire, yeah, I interviewed most of the legislative delegation. She would be the most knowledgeable sure. at this point about. Yeah what's happening uh, fiscally with the state colleges. Yeah. But you've got the gist of it. It's been a long time that it's been underfunded. Yeah. And the, the sad thing is, you know, most of our Vermont students who go on to college yeah. go to the state college system. Sure. CCV, uh, uh, Johnson, Linden State, which is now going by another yeah. name. But Vermont Technical College, yeah, Northern Vermont University, MBU. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And the nurses often go to Castleton. Yeah. And, and it's, uh, so we, for our own uh, future, the future of Vermont, we've got to yeah. beef up those schools, make them um, so they can stand on their own, yeah. for sure. And we should know your background, Carolyn, former principal of, Fair, of Fairfield Elementary School, and I, and I assume a former teacher before that? Yes. So I you, taught in Fairfax, and I taught right. in, in Fairfield, huh. and then I, I was the school principal there for seven years. I right. loved my work. It yeah. was great. I still see some of those students here yeah. around St. Albans, and... and um, I, I just, I love it. I see their children and, you know, even now their grandchildren. Yeah. And it's delightful. I yeah. love it. I loved my work. Um, but I stopped working when my own children started coming along. Uh, my yeah. husband and I have three kids who now are grown. Yeah. Uh, we have two, two grandchildren. Uh, and I, uh, when I stopped working, I, I always thought that I would go back teaching. I didn't. Uh, so I, hmm. I stayed home. I was a stay-at-home mother. Uh, the best use of my time yeah. that I have ever, uh, ever done. Hmm. Uh, and I didn't go back to work until I was elected to the legislature in 2002. My youngest child at that point was a junior in high school. Hmm. So I wow. stayed home all those years. Wow. So you know, you certainly, uh, just for teachers and... I mean the pension issue. Yeah, you can relate to that more yeah. more than more than most folks. Yeah. Um, again, you, you you seem on the surface to have an extremely tough race come November. Beth Pierce seems to be pretty well regarded person. Uh, she's been in for what about three terms or so? Six. I think four. Four, four terms. terms. Not giving you enough uh, credit. Is this? Uh, I'm used to like I I heard John Clark on 
local radio the other day, of course, who's seemingly uh, Phil Scott's uh, primary challenger or main challenger in the Republican gubernatorial primary, mm -hmm. saying, hey, I'm, I'm going to win. He was finally asked a question by you know, one of the hosts, if, if perchance I, we, we hear you saying you're going to win, but if you don't win, will you support Phil Scott? But I guess, uh, do you expect to win this race? Or uh, it's nice to give voters a choice. But have you got an expectation? Have you got, have you got a chance? I'll put it there. Have you got a chance <laughs> to win this race against a seemingly pretty popular Democratic incumbent in a state that, as I hardly have to tell you, is incredibly Democratic? You got you know, a shot at this? Well, I, I think so. I'm, I mean, I'm I investing. assume you wouldn't be running if you didn't think you did. Maybe, maybe a stupid question. I think I have a shot at it. Yeah. I'm, I'm using um, a lot of my own money so far. I hope yeah. to get some donations in after the primary. Yeah. You know, I have nothing bad at all to say about Beth Pierce. Yeah. She's a friend of mine, friend of the family. Really? Um, but I... Was she surprised that uh, her, her, her friend, Ren, Ren, decided to jump into the race? <laughs> I think so, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, there's no hard feelings there. Huh. She and I have known each other for a long time, and really? I uh, I know it's a hard job. I'm thinking, uh, yes, I do want the job, and yeah. I, I do think I have a decent shot at winning really? uh, because I'm knowledgeable about uh, finances. Uh, I think I'm known for that at this point. I don't, don't really know how that happened. Well, I was a teacher by training, but, yeah. but I've uh, come along and work at the State House and I uh, work here on the on the Maple Festival Committee and Martha's Kitchen and through the yeah. church work that I do. I'm known as being the finance person. So I, I think I have a, a good shot at it. At the very least, what I intend to do yeah. is make Vermonters aware of this trust fund yeah. issue. Yeah. We have to know more about that. We have to have more people understanding it because it's through public pressure that these issues get solved. Yeah. People need to start um, uh, knowing uh, really what's going on, what the dangers are, how it's going to affect the rest of our state if mm -hmm. if that small group of 35, 35 or 30, 30 or 35,000 people yeah. get shortchanged, yeah. if we do not keep our promise to them. If Beth Pierce were here now, would, again, would she be? Do you think she'd be taking issue with anything you're saying? Would she? Do you feel it's an issue she hasn't given enough attention to? I assume, or how do? You, what do you think she? Her interaction would be now. I, I'm not sure she. I don't. I don't pay that. And again, it's kind of a low-profile state job, so I'm not aware if she's gotten into this issue at all. But would she be agreeing, presumably, that this is a a big, tough issue to deal with and one that has to be dealt with? Or who knows? Realize you can't speak for, her, but has she talked much about it? I haven't heard her talk yeah, much about it. I guess it. obviously not as much as you would have liked to have heard the treasurer talked about. Right. I know when she came into uh, Ways and Means Committee, which is now four years since I've been on that committee, yeah. uh, but when she used to come in, um, she would talk about the retirement fund in a very cursory way. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I know that I've studied it in depth all uh, yeah. for years now. I think we are in trouble with that thing. Right. Randy Brock agrees with me, several other people. Um, you know, there was a, a report, um, the uh, Business Roundtable people did a long report on this thing last January. David Coates, Lisa Ventress, those, those names, those people um, pr produced a report that's available online. And if any of your listeners can't get hold of it, have them uh, email me. Um, my, my campaign website is carolynbranigan.com. Yep. All one word, no spaces, carolynbranigan.com. Yep. Yep. You can get hold of me there. I'll send you a copy of that report. The no report... Lays out uh, pretty much in everyday Vermonter language what the situation is, how we got there, and they have their own recommendations too as to okay. how to solve it without using taxes. I I believe that I can solve it without using new tax because we have to better manage the money. We can't be giving away that money as it gets generated. The new money that's generated out of that fund, hmm. uh, we've got to keep it in the fund and let it start earning its own. So that so that it expands exponentially if you reinvest what it earns, yeah. and that's that was the plan from the actuaries, and it hasn't been followed for a quarter of a century, yeah. um, and we're in trouble. So uh, Beth, I, I don't want to speak for Beth; she's brilliant. Sure. Um, 
you should have her in. She's a good person. I've known her for a long time. But again, this issue, you're certainly not hearing as much about this particular issue from her as you you would like to or think you should have. I haven't heard it, no. Yeah. It sounds like it's an issue that's getting some. I'll occasionally hear some of the other candidates for state office, you know, mention this. It's obviously not probably the most sexy and the sexiest issue out there. Yeah. I think I've been talking about it. And yeah. so I think they're hearing that, and everybody acknowledges that I'm right. Yeah. Uh, what happens now or what happens to it after the election, yeah. we'll see. Yeah. But, but the, the voters are in control. The, the voters, the people of Vermont can make this happen. Yeah. They've got to insist on it. Yeah. Back, hey, back to the primary. I mentioned John Clara seems to be Phil Scott's most significant opponent in the primary. There are five candidates. The other three are barely known. Do you see the governor winning the Republican primary reasonably easily? Or uh, uh, I heard John Clara on radio the other day. It sounds like, it, just to very simply put, it just sounds like Phil Scott's gotten too liberal. There are some issues that Clara's upset with. He sounds like he's much more conservative than Scott. Does Scott have any problem in the primary as you see it, Carolyn? I think he's going to win the primary, yeah. yes, because overall he's done a very yeah. good job. Sure, there are some areas where he's uh, offended some people, the guns, um, right. you know, things like that. But, I guess uh, but mandatory mask, I'm sure there's some people who are probably not ha happy about that, I'm sure. But yeah, but you know, he's right about that. No, he, he sure seems to be. And, and what's interesting about Vermont, of course, is open primary. Democrats, uh, of course, you don't register by party anyway. Yeah. So I love it when I hear that someone's a registered Democrat in Vermont. They they don't exist, correct? You don't they register don't by exist. party. They don't exist. That's, yeah, absolutely. But I, I would guess, well, of course, there's action on the Democratic primary, but I'm sure, in fact, I know Scott will get some probably Democratic support in the primary next Tuesday. Yeah. You know, but, uh, if people are pulling a Democratic ballot, they yeah. can always write in his name. Yeah. They can write in my that's name. That's a good point. No, that's a, that's a yeah. good point. You would encourage people to do that. Absolutely. You mentioned your email address. Can people give you a call too? Would you rather have them go email wise? If email is better. Okay. Uh, I don't always uh, hear the phone. Uh, so and to, to eat the, so I gave you my um, my address for the website is carolynbranigan.com. Website address. Yeah. And if you want to email me, it's the same thing. Carolyn at carolynbranigan.com. That okay. then I'll get the email. Okay, that's it. That's easy uh -huh. enough. Yeah. What, uh, talking with the primary for a little bit more here, Lieutenant Governor, uh, the main race here seems to be on the Republican side between Scott Milne and Meg Hansen. Have you got a choice there? Scott He's, Milne, by Scott a long Milne. shot. Is that right? He's built businesses. He he knows how to how to uh, run finances for a long time. The legislature's been focused on social issues. We need to go yeah. back now. Swing that pendulum back focus on finances, get ourselves back on stable footing, yeah. especially with the pandemic. You know, this pandemic thing is going to last. We're not going to be over it instantly. Mm -hmm. Even when we get a vaccine, yeah. we're still not going to be over it. The financial damage done to our system right. is going to last for a long time. Right. I think it will be at least two years before we look anything like we looked like a year ago. Yeah. But from what I'm hearing, I guess I hope you're right. You're probably sounding a little more encouraging than I feel. But I, <laughs> no, it's. Uh, it's Do you an, think it'll be longer than two years? Geez, I, uh, I guess I'm the. I'm, I tend to be a glass half empty person. I'm probably the worst person to talk to. But uh, I'm just pretty pretty discouraged. Vermont seems to be doing doing pretty well. I mentioned off air, mm -hmm. just a pretty good friend of mine dealing with the hospitality industry that's just yeah. gotten so so trash. So Vermont's doing well, but unfortunately. You know, big cities around New England and stuff. Uh, yeah. I don't think Vermont wants folks from, you know, some of those places to come into Vermont, or if they do, self quarantine. And it just sounds like uh, almost yeah. unimaginable difficulties to me. And the state, getting back to the state, aside from what we're talking about, Carol, and just uh, state budget, the governor was asked yesterday, I guess, I don't know where the poll came from, but a poll was out. Uh, and the governor certainly talks, as I think you do, about, hey, Vermont may have to just be a leaner, leaner state government down the road. And you've already talked about taxes. The governor certainly doesn't talk about, you know, yeah, we're going to have to raise taxes. He doesn't go near that. But I guess the polls showed that twice as many people, given the state's financial problems, thought we should raise more revenue rather than cut programs. 
and, uh, and the governor is just seems loath to talk about higher taxes, but are they inevitable or, or not or not? I don't think so. You we don't can't. think so? But Vermonters can't afford it. I I whine about taxes. I have been for years. Yeah. And I just should I should note I see no more frequent letters to the editor from anybody than, than yourself, one in the messenger, I think just yesterday. You oh. certainly, are, you know, are very open about throwing out your thoughts on this. Yeah. But so I, not, so not, but aren't, isn't Vermont going to be, in talking to some of the legislators recently here, they've been saying, hey, if you think fiscal 21 is a tough, I think Mike McCarthy in St. Albans City said, boy, fiscal 22 is going to be even a lot, a lot tougher. Well, he's right. Yeah. yeah, looking out into the future, it's going to be very difficult. Yeah. But uh, I, I don't think new taxes are the answer. Yeah. If we raise taxes, someone bears that burden. The taxpayer bears the burden, whether they're businesses yeah. or individuals or retired people, um, and it, that hurts them. That reduces the amount of money they have to circulate sure. in the economy. Yeah. So we we can't do that. Instead, I think we need to trim back some of the programs that we're involved in right any, now. Any specifics you want to throw out? Of course, people are always asked that, and they tend not to get too specific. Anything specifically that comes right to mind? Well, I think we should go where the money is. Yeah. And in social services, um, there's a lot of money spent on on that, on social, social services, yeah. child care, cell phones, uh, uh, rent payment and so forth and obviously we'll have to continue doing that for a while you can't kick people out on the street yeah. but where I would like to see uh, what money uh, um, is available left in that for training job training yeah. there are jobs around <clears throat> if people uh, are trained properly yeah. so if we train them and give them a, a length of time to uh, uh, you know, acquire the skills, then they, they won't need to be supported by the state. There's, they can be supported by themselves. We were doing yeah. something like that a few years ago, and I don't know what happened there, that, yeah. uh, that now we're not um, training uh, young um, benefit recipients uh, as, yeah. uh, in, as rigorously as we used to be. So we need truck drivers, we need uh, nursing assistants, we need people who can use a computer in a grocery store, um, uh, all, all kinds of uh, skills that they, they, they offer that benefit, uh, that um, knowledge down at CCV and other, pl other places too. Yeah. Even older people, you know, there's the Vermont Associates ro located right here in St. Albans. Their yeah. focus is to train older Vermonters, yeah. older than age 55, yeah new skills to keep them in the workforce. Hmm. So, and they are very good at placing people. Yeah. So this can be done, uh, but we, we've, got to, we've got to focus on that. At the federal level, of course, uh, an issue getting a, a ton of attention is the, uh, under the CARES Act, the extra $600 that unemployed people were getting uh, weekly, which has now gone away as Republicans and Democrats are uh, presumably trying to maybe come up with some compromise. And a criticism, especially by Republicans, is, hey, you know, $600, that's a disincentive for some people to get a job. How do you see that issue? Is that, you know, should, should people, you know, should they still get some money but less than the 600 Or did you think that was uh, any thoughts on that issue? It's a huge uh, issue nationally right now. A huge, ish, a huge issue, and it's difficult to say, yes, they got too much money or yeah. no, they didn't, because there are so many different people yeah. who received it, it all sure. in different circumstances. Sure. I think that um, certainly some of them, I, I heard people bragging about the fact that they were making more money now than they sure. were when they were working. Which has certainly been the, probably the biggest criticism of that. Yeah. Especially that shouldn't from have Republicans. happened. It, it, right. It, it, it shouldn't have happened that way. Yeah. So it probably wasn't terribly well planned out initially, yeah. um, but that's the way it ended up, and now the program is over. I would not reinstate the same program making yeah. the same mistakes again. Yeah. So it's probably good that they're hashing it out in, in Washington yeah. and um, trying to come up with something that is a little better planned. Yeah. I heard that there was going to be... Um, a proposal coming forth where a certain percentage of what people were earning right. before would be the the amount, and but but that takes a lot of That's figuring, right. a lot of yeah. you know there are file, uh, forms to file about how much they were right. making and what counts as income and what right. doesn't, and oh, so I'm 
we'll see. We'll see what they end up with. Yeah. Carolyn, you're a Republican, of course, running as a Republican. Out of curiosity, uh, a Republican President Donald Trump, any, any thoughts on how the president's uh, doing? Oh, certainly I, doesn't get a lot of good words from a, a lot of people in Vermont, although I've got friends who are very strong pro-Trump people. Well, let me start by saying that I'm a Republican. I've always run as a Republican because yeah. I believe that taxes should be as low as they can be and that government should be as small as it can be. Those two things. I also believe in uh, our strong efforts to protect our natural environment. Those three things are all old-fashioned Republican uh, supports. Mm. They, they are what, what Republicans believe. I did not support um, Donald Trump. In fact, I wrote a letter to the chairman of the Republican Party in the state uh, before Trump got the nomination, and I told him that we should not be backing up this guy, mm. that he, he was not going to represent us well, mm. certainly not Vermonters. Uh, and did, did you support Hillary Clinton in the last election? Uh, no, I wrote somebody else in. I wrote somebody else in. <laughs> Sounds like Senator Brock, I think, did the same thing. We've yeah. talked to other yeah. folks about this. Yeah. So um, uh. I, I don't support uh, Donald Trump. I I think he's he's outrageous. He's disrespectful to women, yeah. our, our veterans. I shudder at the way he is disrespectful to some of them. John McCain, an honored yeah. American hero, oh. now passed away, but that was that was that was that was terrible the way he was treated. Yeah. And and handicapped people uh, are he, he's not acting like a president who wants the best for all yeah. Americans. So can, could you live with Joe Biden if he's elected or well compared to what we have, yes, I yeah. could live with him. Yeah. I don't know if I'm gonna vote for him yet, yeah. but uh, I don't support Donald Trump. Okay, let's go back to state trade again. It's one of those uh, again one of what one of the six constitutional offices in Vermont, but certainly not a position I think a lot of folks know much about. Can you talk about the job of state treasurer? If you're elected, what's kind of a, have you got a field day to day? What, just tell us about what 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 does the job of state treasurer entail? You taking care of just all the state's money somehow? Or I'll let you I'll let you talk. Yeah, the state banker so takes, the state banker. Uh, supervises investments and and uh, uh, outflow in accordance with state law um, uh, makes sure that um, th we are accountable for what happens to that money that we yeah. don't lose track of any of it yeah. uh, uh, one um, one area um, is is the lost revenue so these are ab abandoned bank accounts or chunks of money that uh, end up uh, floating into state government through overpayment of taxes or something, right. and there's no way to return them to the uh, previous owner. Um, the, uh, the, the state treasurer oversees the return of that uh, money, those lost uh, amounts of money. Um, the, the treasurer's office also has recently taken on um, the responsibility of educating Vermonters and young people on f on financial um, matters, how, how to run a checkbook, how to yeah. balance, you know, your your own statements. Uh, I, th I think that's extremely good, and I would like yeah. to see that continue. But um, mainly during the winter, the treasurer uh, appears at the state house, advising different committees on how to proceed on and, and letting them know where the state is at that particular moment. Yeah. Uh, she or he can uh, inform the committees on on bonding capacity and where where the bonds now are being held and uh, how much uh, further investment um, uh, it might be needed. The, if there is any, the, the treasurer can uh, tell if there's money available to do that. How will the tre How often does the treasurer show up before the legislature? Pretty often when the legislature's in session. Yeah, when they're in session between the House and yeah. the Senate, uh, yeah. I, I mean, it's not unusual to see the treasurer there every day really? for part of the day. Interesting. Uh, at Ways and Means, we used to often have her in and Jeb Spaulding when he was in. Um, I mean, oh, gee, I would say once every couple of weeks at least. Really? Uh, yeah, just asking questions about uh, yeah. various things. 
And Jeb uh, Spalding was, of course, Best Pierce's uh, predecessor. Mm -hmm. They've been our last two treasurers. Yes, that's of course, right. Jim, Jim Douglas logged some time as state treasurer and, of course, secretary of state also. Jim Douglas is the one who called me and asked me to run for this. Really? Uh, so I wouldn't be running if he didn't back me up. I, so I was delighted to have that endorsement. And, and uh, well, after I thought about it for a day or two, I decided that I would run. But And then I, I was delighted to have his endorsement. So we'll, we'll see. Boy, yeah. Carolyn, talk, talk about a tough. It just seems like incumbents have even more of an advantage than, than usual, and they usually have what a ninety-five percent success rate or something. Yeah, but that's just true. with the pandemic, how I mean, talk about your campaign again. No primary opposition, but as we move closer to November, can you envision how are you going to cam campaign? It just sounds like yeah. it's a tough thing to do these days. It is very tough, but it's what I've been thinking about all summer long. Yeah. Um, I I look forward to it. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to miss uh, getting out there and seeing people shaking hands. You and I have known you, what, 30 years? We didn't shake right. hands this well. morning. We don't shake hands with one another yeah. for safety reasons in Vermont anymore. Yeah. But I love getting out and doing that, um, talking with people, uh, meeting them on the street. Um, I used to um, love just standing on a street corner waving, mm -hmm. you know, holding my sign and waving. Um, None of that will happen this year, but the way that that I, I do plan to campaign is is um, letters to the editor, an old uh, technique I've used for a long You're time a veteran. successfully. Nobody does that more than yourself, I don't think. Yeah, I, I hope people read them. <laughs> but uh, what, Social media? Okay, so I'm a dinosaur, as I mentioned off, off air, that anybody who knows me knows only too well. But social media, do you do a lot with social media? Uh, yes, I would say I, I, I'm well, on I guess that. these days, if you're running for office, you, you better be into that, I guess. Huh? Yes, I have a, a, a website that's growing all the time, yeah. carolynbranigan.com. Uh, and I, um, oh, I'm on the Instagram and uh, email and uh, the, the um, Front Porch Forum. Oh, that yeah. uh, and then um, Google has a thing where you can have an ad along the side. I'll be yeah. having that. Uh, yeah. The Messenger has an electronic. You know, their newspaper comes in in the morning, uh, yeah. early electronically now. Oh, they have ads yeah. that can run there. I've taken out several to appear there. Yeah. Um, and um, so I'm I'm gonna hit it hard, I, and I'm I'm gonna be. Uh, singing my refrain wherever I go. Or I, I have been invited to speak to a, a few groups already. Yeah. Uh, when when I go and I, I speak to a group of people, they're all wearing their masks. I have to take my mask off when I talk because yeah. I can't talk behind this thing all the time. Right. Actually, I, just quickly note in case people are wondering as they're watching us on the screen, we're about 10 feet apart. So if you're wondering why we're not wearing masks, we're I think a safe distance apart. But yeah. Anyway, and and it looks like public. I know. I interviewed before talking to you this morning, uh, St. Albans Mayor Tim Smith, St. Albans Town Select Board Chairman Brendan Deso, and the City Council this coming Monday, I guess they're going to have their first public City Council meeting in the City Hall Auditorium where there's uh -huh. plenty of space. So it sounds like things like public meetings are maybe slow, slowly coming back. Yes, uh, I've spoken at three recently. Yeah. Um, people sit the adequate distance apart from w one another. Yeah. Uh, they always wear masks. If they have a question, they'll stand to be heard better through their mask, and right. I appreciate that. It's going to be tough, though. It certainly won't be the kind of meetings that we used to yeah. have. The de the old debates that that's right. not going to happen. Yeah. Um, so ca campaigning will be hard, you know, in, in, because of the pandemic. And so, in addition to uh, the fact that the that it, there's an uh, an entrenched Incumbent yeah. to to take on. I I still I'm not discouraged. I feel I have a good shot at it because oh. I'm so well qualified, and I also, either way, I'm going to have the opportunity to make an issue out of this yeah. thing that I think is vital yeah. for the future of our state's eco economy. Yeah. We cannot let this thing with the retirement fund go any longer. Yeah. We have to get it under control. It's really a dangerous situation. The reason it's dangerous is that we have, we have a legal and a moral obligation to pay these people. Mm -hmm. So we will pay them. That means that it's going to come out of our tax money and the tax and what the tax money was intended for will not be paid anymore. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, let's say the 
um, the, 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 the inspectors at the ag department who are inspecting the meat cutters, making sure they're clean and, and that there are uh, places where they cut the meat and wrap it up and put it on the shelf, that those are all clean and sanitized the number of times a day that they should be, those inspectors may not come out as often because the state won't have money to pay them. There, those kinds of vital programs yeah. will suffer. <clears throat> we cannot have that here. Uh, so, and, and I, I guess I made my point. No, you well, certainly sound <laughs> like you're very impassioned on that issue. That it's issue really aside, important. there's some other, I'm sure there are always other issues, but any other issues that are especially significant to you in terms of running for state treasurer? That certainly sounds like the dominant issue, but any other ones you want to mention here? One issue uh, I, was, I was thinking about um, is, is um, making sure that our employees at the state level are well trained yeah. and that the diversification in the employee population reflects Vermont. So um, we're hearing a lot about Black Lives Matter and the situation there with our um, black people is, is heartbreaking. That needs to be fixed. But you know, our, our biggest minority in Vermont is not black people. It's our indigenous population, right. the Indians. Of course, here we are in Franklin County, and you mentioned yeah. some Abenaki background to, to well, yourself. Yeah, it's back a few generations, but th that's, that's true. Uh, and, and I have been working my whole life on and on to make sure that that population is treated fairly yeah. and treated uh, ac according to state law. And, and in compliance, that they are also in compliance. Right. Um, so I, I think that we have a long way to go to make those people equal, too. Yeah. Uh, in there fact, was, speaking, jumping in, speaking of which, I guess uh, the legislature did pass, this is pretty recently, I guess the four, I, I think, state-recognized Abenaki tribes in Vermont, uh, those folks are giving free uh, fishing and hunting licenses. I think that Re recently passed the legislature. That's right, it did. Uh, that passed just this past session and yeah. the governor signed it into law. Yeah. So what happens, there are four recognized uh, tribes in the state, and I don't think I can name them, but there are four small groups, and one is the yeah. Missisquoi tribe up here yeah. in uh, Swanton, yeah. and they uh, get free licenses. They don't have to pay for the license, yeah. but they pay for the tag. So okay. if they catch a deer or a bear or a turkey, yeah. those uh, uh, that game yeah. needs to have a a tag, so they they like everybody else will have to pay for their tag, mm. but their license itself uh, is going to be free. That brings us into compliance with an ancient agreement made in the 1700s mm. that uh, the native population would continue to uh, harvest uh, their wild game food needs from the forests of Vermont. So uh, now these uh, the, the Abnaki in uh, 2020 are going to have to obey the. The trespassing laws and the the if a property is posted, they can't go right. there. But there are plenty of places where they and other Vermont hunters can go, and they'll be allowed to go there um, with with a free uh, license. The other thing I don't know if you noticed, Richard, but the other law that um, benefiting them uh, in in this past session that was approved was. Um, when they make new signs for our state parks, they're going to write the name of the state park in any directions that are going along, like park here or yeah. fresh water available over here. Yeah. Uh, they're going to write that in English and then then write it in Abnaki. Oh, as is that well. right? I didn't I didn't take note of that. Really yeah. interesting. Oh, I'm delighted with that one. Really? Uh, you must have heard. Of, did you go to Middlebury? No, I went to uh, oh. North Carolina, Duke and Duke Duke. And UNC. Okay, well. It's I, funny, I applied to Middlebury. I actually <laughs> got waiting lists. I'm going back many decades, and I'm sure they'd get a good laugh out of my application these days with that same high school record. But anyway, <laughs> but talk about a great and great college. Well, you got waitlisted. That's pretty good. Yeah, like I said, they'd get a good laugh out of my application today with the, with the same high school standards. But anyway, yeah, talk, talk about a talk. I won't even get into someone we mutually know who didn't get into Middlebury. Middlebury for something about I'll be bitter forever because she had an incredible uh, track record and resume. But anyway, well, so what about Middlebury? Um, what, did, what, did one of your, is one of your kids in Middlebury? No, no. Uh, no um, 
No, my, my husband's business partner, the sergeant girl, Ellen, went to Middlebury. Okay. My kids went to Smith, Cornell, and uh, Notre Dame. Well, it sounds like they did yeah, pretty, pretty they well. They did okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they all wanted to go out of state. Yeah. Anyway, Middlebury. Middlebury has a great language program. Right. And they right. have just this summer started the Abnaki School. It went for oh. two weeks, top taught by Jesse uh, Bruchak. Oh, sure, I know a name, native, a name I know well. Yeah, okay, na good uh, native uh, Abnaki speaker. Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. uh, they, they had a, um, uh, students uh, signed up, I think there were 20 of them. Really? Um, I, um, I signed up, but I had to pull out of the class for uh, mm -hmm. other reasons. I, not because I was sick, but I, I had to pull out. No, uh, but you didn't, you were hoping to do that. I was hoping to do that. Wow. Yeah, I'd like to, I'd like to, be able to speak a few phrases at least of, oh. of Abnaki. Oh. It's our indigenous language here in the yeah. state, so I'm just interested in that and basically in all things history anyway, so oh. I, I really like it. So the anyway, the Abnaki language is going to start to be featured on our state park signs. Wow, I didn't know that. Interesting. Yeah, starting, uh, well, whenever, in the winter is when they usually make new signs, replace the yeah. signs that have been damaged through the the use in the summer. Um, yeah. So, thought Just I'd mention that. Just being state parks out of curiosity, Camp Kilcare, or sorry, I guess Kilcare is state park now officially. Yeah. A place that I kill for having grown up on the Massachusetts coast. I, I love that. And it was funny, this is going back a month or so, as the governor's last question at a news conference, Governor, what about Camp Kilcare State Park, KKK? And I had never heard that issue even come up. Had you ever heard anybody voicing <laughs> any concern about that out of curiosity? Never, never heard that as a concern. Did, so I think they officially dropped the camp, and I think it's officially now Kilcare State Park to get away from the. Yeah. But I had never heard about, never heard about any negative nah. connotation of that. Just curious, you hadn't either, I guess. Me so. either. I, you know, it started out, I think I know the reason it was called Camp Kilcare. Yeah. It was a boys camp. It was an old boys camp. And, and yeah. they wanted to, in the 1930s, they wanted to yeah. kill your cares away. So huh. camp, kill, care. Kill, kill your cares. Oh, Get rid of them. And I, I think that's how Camp yeah. Kilcare got its name. But the KKK thing, I, yeah. I don't know where that came from. I never heard that here yeah. locally as a concern, yeah. ever. Well, I'm and just we happy the place lot. is here. I'm down there about every other day or so. Yeah, good. Back, back to the Office of State. How, how big an office is it? If you're elected, how many um, employees have you got in the Office of Vermont Ooh. State Treasurer? Do you know? I haven't counted them. I think there are about 20. About 20 or it's, so. It's not a big office. Yeah. Um, uh, but they're, they're very well skilled. People working there have been there yeah. a long time. They have yeah. some history. Uh, and I, I think for the most part, they're quite efficient. Yeah. Well, uh, we've got about eight minutes left or so. I think we talked about this off here. You want to get into something totally different here, but sure. again, with your legislative career, seven terms in the House, one term in the Senate, yeah. and I guess uh, it was a, a surprise, I, I know to me and a lot of people, when you didn't run for re-election to the state Senate, mm -hmm. and at that point you had run into some health issues, and is that something you want to... Well, do? sure. Uh, I, I had melanoma, wow. which is a, a skin cancer. It's the it's the deadliest Most of the skin cancers. Most serious form, right. Yeah. I, As I um, mentioned, I've had my share of skin cancer, for, fortunately, way short of melanoma, so yeah. I've been doing just fine. But, boy, that's that's big-time serious. Yep, and I had a bad case, so I had to quit. I, I didn't um, talk a lot about the reason why. I, I mean, I, I wanted to spend time with my family, and that's so, true, and I did. Yeah. But I also was at Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. In, bon in Boston. In, in Boston. They, they were exceptionally good. I can't say wow. enough about them. They cured me. I'm fine. Wow, At this great. point, um, I, I don't need to go in and, and see them again for six months. Wow. They think that it's all gone. I had eight surgeries. Wow. It had gone into my left side quite a bit, um, but it's gone now. And they, they were outstanding. Uh, and um, in, in, at Dana-Farber, I kept telling them, Oh, you guys are the best in the world. And they say, no, no, we're third best in the world. I can't remember who no, was right? Mayo Clinic and somebody best? else. No. But, but, I, but I, I'm telling you, they're the best in the world. And you would, of course, encourage, as, as I would when I happen to talk to some of my friends, just encourage people. I mean, skin, we talked about this off here. Funny, Vermont, you know, Burlington, one of the cloudiest cities in the country. But Vermont has a, a very high incidence of skin cancer. It just seems counterintuitive. Yeah. But encourage people just to... 
you know, make sure they're getting their yeah, body check once in a while for that. Yeah, uh, Vermonters should definitely go in at least once a year. Yeah, yeah they, uh, Dana Farber was interested in me because I was a native Vermonter really? and I had the Abnaki background okay. both coming down there. So they were, they, huh. they did a lot of um, uh, questioning about my, my uh, genealogical really? background and also my, my own personal history. I grew up on a dairy farm, right. and you know, I, I didn't think about this until after I got the cancer, but every summer, starting the summer I graduated from eighth grade, hmm. on the last day of school, I wore a bikini top and a pair of cutoff jeans, and really? that's what I wore all summer long really? because I drove tractor for my father. Really? I didn't throw hay. I didn't work in the barn. I drove tractor. Really? So I was out in the so sun. just in a, a ton of uh, sun exposure, ton. summer sun exposure. I always had a gorgeous tan I all through my teen years. I, I stopped doing that work when I was... Uh, 22, the summer I got married. Wow. So from eighth grade wow. to age 22. And so at Dana-Farber, 40 years later, wow. they're telling me that that's, that overexposure so, to the sun is probably what gave this yeah. uh, to me on the left side. Yeah. So, um, so uh, people should go get checked. Don't put it off. It's really important. Anything funny looking on your skin. Yeah. Um, the melanoma I had was black. As black as this microphone, it looked like really? a pocketbook. Really? Yep. And yeah. and uh, but they're not always that color. Some are red, some yeah. are brown and raised. Go have the doctor check it yeah. and uh, don't don't let it go because it'll spread bad. And the one thing, just in my little experience, fortunately nothing nothing resembling yours, fortunately for me. Just if you have like a little scab that just doesn't heal, that's the thing that oh, comes yeah. comes to my mind. Just every once in a while, hey, why why isn't that? Why didn't that heal? If it just doesn't heal, that may well be a, a bit of skin cancer. Right. Right. So anyway, I um I loved working in the state house. I did seven terms in the house. Was it seven or eight? I, can't I think remember. seven, because I just checked that myself. I, I okay, think good. I think seven if I counted correctly. But, okay, and then and the then, one well seven terms in the house and then one in the senate. And so the senate. Okay, altogether. there's eight. I think. Yeah, I, I loved working uh, in the state house. <clears throat> I, I really really enjoyed my time there. I met some wonderful people and I learned a lot. It was like doing one graduate course after another. Yeah. It was so enriching and I, I just really loved it and I was able to do a lot to help the people of Franklin County. Mm. So I, I really enjoyed my time there. Um, we'll see what happens in the future. I hope to win this race. If I, um, if I don't, well, I'm not going to go away. I'll try something else. Yeah. <laughs> Of course, you have. Of course, you were succeeded in the House by Carl Rosenquist, who's yes. actually got a primary challenge. I don't happen to know his primary opponent, but I suspect uh, Carl's woman. probably in pretty good. Do you know? Do you know his opponent? I can't remember her name. Well, a young, young woman. No uh, she looks to be in her twenties, uh, but the local party has endorsed Carl, right. uh, so I expect Carl to win on that. Yeah, and, and I guess there's a contest in, in November in that in that district, I believe. I ben, think ben Chippinelli, have I heard, Democratic candidate? I think, I think. so, yeah. Anyway, um, so the 13-member local delegation, and again, you logged a lot of years there. Um, I guess just one one definite change in the delegation with Mariana Gamache and Swanton, a right. Republican not running for re-election. The sheriff uh, running for her. The sheriff, for that I would seat. say, would be the heavy. Hank Vegas has uh, the former sheriff, Bob Norris, as a heavy favorite, although there is another candidate uh, yeah. in Swanton. Yeah. So it looks like probably not much of a change in the delegation. Down to two minutes, but Franklin County just strikes me as a kind of alternative universe up here, Carolyn, with the state so democratic. <laughs> and Franklin County... A 13 member delegation. We're talking, uh, what, 10 Republicans, two Democrats, and one independent, Barbara Murphy, who I talked to with on the phone the other day. But again, it's just more conservative terrain up here. Any, uh, again, it just seems, uh, Franklin County just seems like a very different, different universe almost. Yeah, it is a different universe up here. Yeah. People are pretty conservative, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, and I, um, I've I've always done well in Franklin County. I, I yeah. think that there's a chance, and you know, in Montpelier, when I was working there, I I was known for being able to find the common ground. Yeah. 
people who know me in Montpelier, right. who are Democrats, who are or and who are even more liberal than a Democrat, yeah. they know that I can, I can sit down with them across the table. We can come to some kind of an agreement. Tim Ash said that several times. Yeah. He and I were on more than one conference committee. Interesting. Uh, Down to uh, about one minute. Tim Ash, of course, that's one of the races getting a lot of attention on the Democratic side. Tim Ash and Molly Gray seems to be. Yeah. Who do you see winning? Have you got a feel for who wins that race? I think I think Tim Ash. I've Tim put Ash. money on him. Is that right? He, uh, he's got a lot of experience and a lot of support. Molly is doing uh, a surprisingly good job yeah. for a newcomer. Yeah. Um, there's some question about her eligibility to run. Has that Having been lived solved? in Switzerland, yeah, and we're just yeah. about out of time. But yeah, that uh, issue did did come up. She was in Switzerland for a number of years, but she says under Vermont law. She anyway. should try again. If she yeah. doesn't win, she should try again. Yeah. Okay. On on that note, uh, Carolyn Brannigan, good good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Again, Carolyn Brannigan, Republican candidate for state treasurer in the primary coming up next week, and it'll be interesting to see how things uh, play out towards November. Thanks, Carolyn. Thank you. Thanks for watching us here on Northwest Access TV. Folks, I'm Richard Carberthwaite. We'll see you again. Thanks.